Morning thoughts, morning thoughts, morning thoughts. Listen, I'm trying to keep a smile on my face this morning, right? But we're not going to be going live this morning. This video right here, this video, you will not see my face after I've set this video up so you understand what it is you're about to watch. This is a somber moment. Yesterday, we had a school shooting and multiple people are dead, including students and teachers. Yeah. So right now, this is a scary time for anybody that has a child or children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews that are going to school in the United States of America. For my most part, I've realized that this happens in public schools. I've never heard of it happening in a private school, a private school being shot up. So I'll go ahead and say that if your child or children attend the public schools, to include those schools that wear uniform and are considered like Montessori schools or whatever, they're still public schools. So unless you're paying buku money to go to a private school with a high tuition, your child is at risk. And I think it's time that we talk about this. So this video is going to be about that. Not only that, I will sprinkle that along the way along with some things that I think as a U.S. Army Infantry Combat Veteran, I can tell parents to prepare their children for if something like this should happen in any setting they're at. Could be at the grocery store at Walmart, could be walking through the mall, or it could be at a public gathering in the park or in school, right? how to get to safety, first things they should do, mistakes that were made by students in this recent shooting, so on and so forth. Those are the things that I'll be talking about in this video. But this video also is largely about the person who actually did the shooting. And not only is it about the person who did the shooting, it's about the person's background that did the shooting, it's about the person's family member's response to what they had just done, which is going to be shocking for a lot of you, so on. So this video right here, I want you to take it deeply. I want you to understand, listen carefully, and I want you to pay attention to what's being said, okay? Um, I sourced this information for you today. Today I'm going to take the day off just to decompress. This is super troubling to me. I am normally super high-edged and super paranoid about the safety of my children especially and to know that i have six children that all go to school in the united states of america one is currently being schooled online the other five are in school so there are five chances here of me losing one of my children this has become our everyday life our reality and sadly, our normalcy in the United States of America today. I know a lot of Jamaicans are going to be saying, as you see behind me, there's that half Jamaican, half American flag right there. Because I was born in Jamaica, but I was raised in the United States of America. And I myself came to the U.S. at a very young age and did all my schooling pretty much in the United States of America. But things and times have changed. And now... My children are in harm's way more than ever before. So we're going to talk about all that in this video. Today I will take today off to put things in perspective. I have a lot of material for this channel. So I'm going to be editing and uploading. But also I'm going to be gathering my thoughts and putting together my composure. Because as a parent, I am jumping out of my skin right now. As I'm making this video for you, my children will be getting up in another hour and getting dressed to go to another school for the day. And the possibilities of this happening is right there, right? So shout out to all the parents out there who are living in the United States of America, who have children who go to school in the United States of America. Your worries are never ceasing. We see what our normalcy has become. So I won't tell you to enjoy the video. I will more like tell you to listen carefully. Please let the video play out. You will not see my face again. I will see you tomorrow morning right here live on Morning Thoughts with SoFlo TV. 
God go with you. You go with God and be good. I'm out. Peace. Listen, Appalachia High School in Georgia yesterday got shot up. Yep, another student walked into the school with loaded gun and unloaded the gun, killing and injuring others. We're going to talk about this story today, but more than that, we're going to talk about the deeper message behind this. So, the family of the Georgia school shooter, his name is Colt Gray. His family is now threatening to go full throttle, as they call it, after that 14-year-old was charged as an adult for murdering four people on Wednesday. Before I even get any further into the story, let me say this. When it happened, the first thing I did was try to search on social media, trying to find the identity of the individual Colt Gray. They released his name. They released that it was a 14-year-old boy thought to be a student of the school. But they did not release his description. The funny thing about this is usually in the United States of America, when a crime is committed, somebody would say it's a Hispanic male, 5'4", 5'5", 25 years old, etc., etc. A black male, 6'1", that, 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 etc. White male, so, so, so. Now, when this happened, I saw Colt Gray, and I realized there was no racial tag to it there was no description was he light-skinned dark-skinned blonde-haired nothing so immediately I said to myself this is a white child and I know it's a white child because the media always goes out of its way to protect the identity off at the first get-go of the story the funny thing about this is I went to a couple of news media houses and there it was, pictures of black young men on the story. So I would click on the pictures thinking this is Colt Gray. And then the screen would completely flip to somebody that was killed two years ago. Or somebody that did a lesser crime and was wanted for robbery a couple of months ago. And I'm like, these people aren't Colt Gray. Why when I search for Colt Gray, I'm getting young black male. It wasn't until 24 hours later this morning that I was able to get the picture of Colt Gray. So, that's something for us to think about. Now, another thing for us to think about is why is it that 90, 95% of the time when you hear about a public shooting, a school being shot up, or a concert being shot up, multiple people shot, why is it 90-95% of the time a white male? I know they don't want this tag, right? But we have to say it because this is what's been happening. Now, the family of the Georgia school shooter, Colt Gray, has threatened to go full throttle. Whatever full throttle means, I can tell you what full throttle means to me after they charged the 14-year-old as an adult for murdering four people on Wednesday. Colt Gray's relatives, they ran to his defense within hours of him opening fire at the Appalachian High School, where he allegedly killed four people and injured nine other persons. The teenager's aunt, her name is Annie, Annie Paul Hummus Brown, she went on social media during the aftermath of what had happened. She started bringing up issues that he had dealt with and saying that she will take care. I'll take care of my nephew and what he needs on the inside. In other words, she is letting the, fam the world know immediately this young man went through a lot of stuff and we're going to be here for him and I'll take care of him on the inside. He'll be all right. He's going to have commissary money. He's going to have money on his books. I don't know if she ever been to prison, but Colt in prison is going to be rough, and his family is not going to be there to save him. However, she said, just check yourself before you speak about a child that never asked to, to, to deal with bullshit he saw on a daily basis. This is what she wrote in her post. Just check yourself. 
before you start to speak about a child who had to deal with bullshit that he saw on a daily basis. And then she let it stay up there for quite some time and she deleted it. But she deleted it not before a lot of other people were able to get to it and, you know, screenshot it and pass it around social media. Now, I must say, there's a lot of kids out here dealing with a lot of stuff, you know, and they're not shooting up the school. I mean, people go through things. But do you pick up a rifle or a handgun and go shoot up a school and kill people, multiple people, because you're dealing with stuff in your life? Is that a justification? What's funny to me is, and I hate to make this a racial thing, but every time the sh uh, there's any kind of shooting or crime committed by a black person or a person of color, rather, be it Hispanic or whatever, it's as if they say they were predestined to be that way, or it's in their DNA, or they're just savages and animals. But every time... A Caucasian child does the same thing. Oh, he's been dealing with a lot of shit. Oh, he was abused since birth. Oh, he has mental issues. You, you see where I'm going with this? So, this aunt also went on to say after, after she said, check yourself before you speak about a child that never asked to deal with bullshit that he saw on a daily basis, and I'll take care of my nephew on the inside. Y'all ready to see Paul Hummus blood go full throttle? Nah, I wouldn't either. What is that supposed to mean? This is threatening the public. Y'all ready to see Paul Hummus blood go full throttle? Nah, I wouldn't either. I tell you what, if your nephew was dealing with shit on a daily basis, y'all should have went full throttle then. Paul Hummus' blood should have went full throttle then and tried to get him out of the bullshit that he was seeing and dealing with on a daily basis. I mean, you're speaking about it, that means you know about it. But now you're ready to go full throttle on strangers? You could have went full throttle in his life. So the social media, this post... It sparked a lot of fury as tributes were pouring in for the four victims in the tragedy. A teacher was killed. Her name is Christina, Christina Irimi and Richard Aspinwall. Two, stu two teachers were killed. And students Mason was killed and Christian were ki killed as well. Both students who were killed were both 14 years old. They showed a picture of the police officers walking around in the school. There's obviously an assault rifle sit, um, standing there on the ground, right? His auntie says, they are charging my 14-year-old nephew as an adult for murder. Y'all ready to see the Paul Hummus blood go full throttle? Nah, I wouldn't be either. Hmm. Listen, somebody needs to keep a close eye on her. Please, someone, get me in touch with GBI. I've tried calling. This is what she said again. I am not scared. I will not back down. I will not disrespect other parents and families that are dealing with this tragedy on the opposite end. They did not deserve this. I will not do anything but humbly support the families involved in this incident that did not ask to be participants. With that said... I will not leave my nephew standing alone. When Uvalde happened, I told my own children that only hurt people hurt people. I did everything I could to fight for my nephew and my niece and my other nephew. Y'all can go ahead and play the ball game or the game, the blame game all y'all want to. But the families that are affected by my nephew's actions, they deserve all the attention now. I will take care of my nephew and what he needs on the inside. Just check yourself before you speak about a child that never asked to deal with the bullshit he saw on a daily basis. That was her full message. And that message was posted and then the message was deleted. It seems like... She's angry at the world, right? Now, authorities are saying that they're still investigating how 
he was able to bring a AR-15 style weapon inside of his school with footage of the aftermath appearing to show that the weapon was laying on the floor as terrified students were escorted down the hallway to safety. As parents and police raced to the school in Winder, Georgia, Paul Hummus Brown took to Facebook to plead for help in contacting Georgia Bureau of Investigations. I don't know why she wants to contact Georgia Bureau of Investigations. I mean, she's an inside family member. She obviously knows more than we, the public, know what might have set this young man off. She said she ain't scared. She won't back down. She's going to talk to them. So let's see where this goes, right? Now, as parents and police were racing around trying to pick up their kids, please, someone get me in touch with GBI, she said. I've been calling. They're not answering. She wrote, I will not leave my nephew standing alone. So for her, it was all about her nephew. For her, it wasn't about what her nephew had done and who had lost their lives. It was just all about her nephew and getting to her nephew and making sure her nephew is all right. Man, listen, these school shootings are getting terrible. And I don't even want to be on the side where we're talking about guns and banning assault rifles and all that other stuff. I just want to be on the side where I'm talking about why is it that someone feels the need to step into a public space and fire a rifle, killing multiple people for their personal problems. Now, now while Paul Hamas Brown's remarks sparked backlash online from some people, her Facebook friends stood behind her and echoed her comments on the tragedy. You got to understand a lot of people on Facebook, most of your friends are like family members anyways, right? So one parent relative said, Colt never asked for what he's been through. I'm with you a million percent. Priors for everyone affected. Another commentator or commenter claimed to be a former teacher of the school shooter said, I taught Colt and I know firsthand that he dealt with so much. I love him. And we'll be thinking about him and your family as you go through this tragedy. Such a sweet boy. He just murdered four people, but he's such a sweet boy. Now, after Paul Hamas Brown's social media posts emerged, some criticized her remarks. With one person saying that the alleged shooter's family failed him. And now you want to make excuses? Teachers jumping on there saying, I know firsthand and personally what he went through. Where were all these people? Were your, his auntie, his past teachers, all the family members that are supportive now. Where were all of they? Why could they not have wrapped their arms around this young man as a community and save him from this? Officials said that Gray's shooting spree was ended within minutes. And he immediately surrendered when he was confronted by law enforcement, gave up and got on the ground. Hmm. And the funny thing is they always get to walk away alive. They probably took him to Burger King or McDonald's right after on his way to a jail cell. You want something to eat, Colt? You okay? Now it is unclear how the 14 year old gunman got a hold of that weapon that was used in the attack. And there, with cops reportedly raiding his family's home in the hours after the shooting, the victim's faces were actually displayed on social media before the person who made them victims was displayed to social media. You believe that? Let me say that again. The victim's faces were displayed all over media before the actual person who made them victims and mind you the two children that were killed by this other child they are the same age as him so i don't want to hear an excuse about the age his face should have been the first face that was out now following his arrest gray would be charged with murder and he will be tried as an adult this is what the director of the georgia bureau of investigation said According to law enforcement, Gray opened fire at approximately 10.23 a.m., hitting at least 13 people 
as frantic scenes took over the school. You could imagine you're in school, gunshots are going off, everybody is ducking. If you're in the United States of America and you're a student going to school, if this is not a part of your mindset by now, then you've been sleeping and living under a rock. If you go to school or if you have children going to school in the USA, you should be telling your children the first sound you hear of gunshots have an escape plan. This is what you do. Y'all better plan something and walk your children through it so they might have a chance of survival because obviously this happens a lot in the United States of America and not only does it happen a lot, it's random, happens everywhere, so we can't even pinpoint it and be like, oh, it happens in the western region, or it happens more in the eastern region. It happens everywhere, and it happens a lot, right? One thing I know for sure is that 90, 95% of the shooters who shoot up the schools, and the percentage is probably even higher than that, it's usually a white male. So do we go to school now and start looking at our white friends or white classmates as a potential shooter. If a little Bobby has some problems at home and he's going through some stuff, is he going to come to school with his father's AR-15 and shoot up school and kill a bunch of us? How is this going to play out? Where's my escape route? Now imagine images that were showed, would show students screaming, as they were running around on campus, terrified, parents raced to find their kids with one mother describing the scene outside of the school as pure chaos. A junior at the school, Layla Sayerath, said that she sat next to Colt Gray in algebra class just minutes before he began the shooting spree. He was in my algebra class. I was sitting right next to him. And guess what? He didn't think to shoot her. Gray didn't take a bathroom pass, she said, leading her to initially think that he was merely just going to skip class because he just left. He didn't take a bathroom pass. Usually, if you're going to leave your classroom and go to the bathroom, you need to take a bathroom pass. Back in the day, when grown people like myself were in school, they were allowed, as the teachers were allowed, to deny the students a bathroom pass. You're going to the bathroom too often. Sit down. I'm not giving you another bathroom pass. Nowadays, and I think for a couple of years, because I have children in school here, my children have told me that you can take a bathroom pass as often as you want to because the law now says the teachers cannot regulate your body and tell you when you need to go to the bathroom. So, for instance, if a student has a weak bladder and a student has to go to the bathroom three times within an hour, and the class is an hour long. The teacher doesn't have the liberty to judge that student based on the average student who has a healthy system going in place where they can sit through the whole class without using the bathroom. This child has a special need, and the special need is they might have irritable bowel syndrome, or they might have a weak bladder, and they might frequently need to poop or pee. So the teachers are not allowed to question the students anymore. They just give them a bathroom pass. When they ask for a bathroom pass, most they'll probably say is make it quick. Hurry up and come on back so you don't miss the lessons. So when he left the classroom, they thought, mm, that was funny. He didn't take a bathroom pass. Okay, maybe he's just skipping the class today. She said, that's what she thought. I was just sitting next to him in algebra class before the loudspeaker announcement told teachers to check their emails. Shortly after, the student said that Gray returned outside their classroom and a student got up to open the door for him before jumping back at the sight of his gun. So he came back into the classroom to start the shooting there. Once you leave the classroom, the door is locked. So in order for you to come back in the classroom, it's not a swinging door situation. In order for you to come back in the classroom, the teacher is going to have to tell somebody, get up and open the door and let Gray in or something like that. So they got up to open the door and that's where they saw the gun. I guess he saw that we weren't going to let him in 
and I guess the classroom next to me, their door was open. So I think he just started shooting in that classroom is what she said. Wow. So he didn't start shooting in the classroom that he came from because he left the improper way. He was supposed to take a bathroom pass before he left. He didn't take a bathroom pass. He walked out of class. The teacher is probably saying, go to the principal's office. I'm not letting you back in my class. But the other door for another class was open. So he just started shooting in that class first. The student said that Gray proceeded to fire off a number of rounds, one after another after another. When we heard it, most people just dropped to the floor and like kind of crawled in the area, like piled up on top of each other. You see what I'm saying? For those of you who are listening, for those of you who have children, nephews, grandchildren that are going to school in the United States of America, you better have a plan with your... It's sad that this is something that we have to talk about with our students, but it's become normal, regular place in the United States of America. And we cannot get away from it. We cannot deny it. It is our reality. Okay? So you got to start talking to your students. That's the last thing you want to do. She said they all got scared. They hit the floor. First thing, normal human reaction when you hear gunshots fall to the floor, get low, make a low silhouette. But then they all crawled to the same area and piled on top of each other. If he was able to open that door and get in there, and he had like 15 students piled on top of each other, can you imagine the carnage? It would have been 15 students dead instead of two dead, because all he would have had to do was keep on firing at, the, at them piled up on top of each other. The student who was sitting next to him in algebra said that her friend was in the next classroom and witnessed someone being shot, which left him shaken up. He saw somebody get shot. He had blood on him. He was that close. He was kind of limping and he looked horrified. Describing her classmate, the young lady said, he never really talked. He wasn't in school most times. He would just skip class. Even when he would have talked, it was one word answers. That's the kind of person that he was. He never really talked. He skipped class a lot. And even when he did talk, it would usually be like one word answers. She also said that she wasn't surprised when he was identified as the shooter. Now, there are students in the school who are saying they weren't surprised that he was the shooter. This is why I'm saying to y'all on this video right here, are we going to have to start training our children to like looking at the young white males that are in the school with them? Because most of the time when the shootings happen, the students at the school, they give a description of the individual that did it like, we weren't surprised. He's antisocial. He doesn't speak to anybody. He only uses one word answers. He skips classes a lot. He is just so different from the rest of us, right? He dresses weird and says weird things, stays to himself. All, these are things, markers that we can look at. If you study child development, you will know that one of the most important milestones in a child's life is to fit in as a teenager. Now, she said she wasn't surprised that he was identified as the shooter. And she said that when you think of shooters and the way that they act, it's usually that quiet kid. And he was one of those. He fits that description. Now, as information floods in on the school shooting, officially, right now, as information is flooding in, Officially, the deadliest in Georgia's history, students and parents shared their shock at the horror that had unfolded at that school. Some of these text messages by students texting their parents, come get me, please, I don't want to die, or I'm going to die. Mom, they're shooting up the school. Mom is like, where are you at in the school? They're trying to describe where they're at. The, the mother or the father are like, I'm on my way. And then, of course, chaos ensues outside the school where a bunch of parents show up 
trying to get inside the school to get their own child. One mother, Erin Clark, she shared the text message she and her son Ethan from the moment he learned that there was an active shooter in his school. And she shared this text message with the public. He wrote, he said, school shooting right now. I'm scared and I'm not joking. His mom responded instantly, assuring him that she was leaving work. In a heartbreaking response, Ethan wrote, I love you. He wrote, I love you, as if this might be the last time he would tell his mama, I love him. His mom's running from work to get to her vehicle to get to her son, telling him, I'm on my way. I love you, baby. Where are you? She said. And then Ethan Clark said, Ethan told her that he was in class. And he said, someone's dead. Many students filmed the aftermath. Students go to school with a lot of cell phones now. They might not be able to use them in class or not supposed to, but today is 2024. You know, technology has advanced a lot. Everybody has a cell phone. Many students filmed the aftermath with one shaken grandfather revealing his granddaughters were led out past blood and victims after the shooting and they're traumatized traumatized seeing somebody shot laid out on the ground blood everywhere they heard the shots had SWAT teams come in guns drawn in their classrooms looking for shooters no kid should ever have to go through this but guess what this is normal life now in the United States of America. If you don't believe me, just look up Google. Just Google school shootings and see how many school shootings we've had in the past, say, five years. Forget school shootings, look up mass shootings and see how many mass shootings we've had in the past five years. Forget five years, how many we've had in the past one year. This is troublesome, it's worrying, it's scary and for those of us who have children going to school it's even scarier i don't know what else to say i'm gonna leave this one right here and wait for more to develop i've heard that the shooter was on the fbi's radar for over a year and the backstory is that his parents are separated and that his mom endured 13 years of abuse from his father, or that is what her social media posts implied. So authorities are now investigating both the motive and the possible warning signs that were leading up to this incident. The event shocked the local community, of course, prompting a significant law enforcement response and leaving the school devastated. Colt is only 14 years old, and he was born to a mother named Marcy Gray and his father. Now, while specific details are out there about his family, like his auntie and his mother, their origin and their ethnicity, etc., etc., there isn't much out there about his father. We know that he has two younger siblings, a brother and a sister, in Bethlehem, Georgia, close to the school, is where he actually lived with his father. Now, the mom saying that the father was abusive to her, I'm thinking maybe the father was also abusive to Colt. It's been revealed that Colt's mother and father, they've been separated, and it was due to, likely due to, an abusive relationship. She actually attended Fitzgerald High School, and she later studied at Georgia Southern University, where she graduated with a bachelor's degree in science and technology, and she is listed in her LinkedIn, her professional profile, as a quality engineer at PCC Airfoils. These are the information that's been released about her. Moreover, specifically, her social media suggests that she endured 13 years of abuse from her husband or ex-husband 
who also experienced severe physical abuse as he was growing up from his own family. She shared some painful stories of his suffering, including having his skull cracked open by a bar stool, an incident that was linked to substance abuse. <clears throat> okay, so in other words, here we go, right? Hurt people, hurt people. This is what was found that she printed. It said, from my husband's first memory, all he knew was abuse, severe physical abuse. I'm talking everything from getting a broken arm at the age of eight while he was totally asleep to having a bar stool crack his skull open. I still rub my fingers across the scar, the gouge on his scalp and think to myself, how? I can't even comprehend it. That is what substance abuse can do to a mama, a daddy, a spouse, a sibling, you name it, and it will reach them. Colt's parents are known to have had a very troubled relationship regarding this, and they're looking at this as, of course, this is some of the stuff that he himself had to endure. Now, here's the thing. During investigations, Colt's father admitted that there were hunting guns in the house, but he claimed that Colt did not have unsupervised access to those hunting guns. Despite these warning signs, no legal action had been taken at the time due to insufficient evidence. And that's what we know so far. Let me close this video off by saying this, right? Some people should never have children. And the reason why I say some people should never have children is because some people were traumatized as children. And they have not healed from their trauma. They've only carried it throughout their lives. And they've gone on to traumatize other people and hurt other people and made excuses for hurting other people and have blamed other people instead of finding help for themselves and becoming a better person or healing from the trauma that was inflicted upon them. So eventually, when it comes time to have children, they naturally, even though they tell themselves, I'll never do to my child what was done to me. See, saying that is much easier than actually holding true to that. Because once the human brain learns something, then your actions will follow what your brain has learned. So, that's where the problem lies. In other words, what I'm trying to say is, if you're thinking about having children... You know, being a parent does not come with a book that says this is how it's done. There is no guideline to it. You kind of use your common sense and it's trial and error. But if you are a damaged person, I would suggest that you get professional help on some level. I would suggest that you really work at becoming a better person, facing your demons and working through them before you start having children. Not that you will end up hurting the children, but it's the impact on these children. Children, they are not mature enough to handle certain situations. So when children are exposed to certain things, the reaction that comes from them trying to wrap their little minds around what they are enduring can end up being a catastrophic outburst like taking a rifle and shooting up a school this is something for us to think about i'm going to leave this video right here leave your comments in the comment section below we'll continue to follow this story and i'll catch you on the next video it's soflow tv i'm out peace